Okay, so this is about, this lecture is about, you know, I had, I had some students that told me, hey, miss, you know, I reviewed my, uh, my schedule because they have to do a schedule for one of my classes. And then, um, you know, and, and she said, you know, and I pretty much organized it and really got with it right after you told us that, you know, we really need to get with it in this and that or whatever she says. And I think I'm doing really well. But, you know, what do you suggest since, you, you know, you're you're so, um, you know, successful. So I'm grateful for that. I don't know if I'm really am successful. You know, it's it's a it's it's something daily that we work and we you know strive for and success doesn't necessarily mean you know wealth or money but it's a balance and it's about really achieving your best right and being being your true authentic self but also being the best person that you can be because the only person that you are competing against and the only person that you should be better than uh should be the person you were a minute ago should be the person that you were five days ago with you know the only person that you need to be better is is the person that you were a year ago five years ago or 10 years ago and that's the only competition that you should ever have in life because everybody's different and everybody has a different path and everybody you know lives very differently and only they know what their path is and no matter how many people know them or have lived with them only you know what your path is so it's about really improving and it's about really being your your highest version and the best version of yourself okay so and then with that, you know, I have a business communication class and I have a student that um, is was very interesting because I sort of never thought that the student was much interested. And I don't mean that as a diss, he knows who he is. But, and so he was on my team's meeting, which is like virtual, you know, like um, like Zoom, right? But we have teams and he said, miss, I'm starting my business, which I'm, I was so happy, right? And, and that explained a lot of other things because I only get to see my students on this end, right? With like work and this and that. So I try to, you know, as I tell them, you know, I am, um, you know, I'm teaching because I am here to teach them about life, but it is through content to do so. And so it's about empowerment and it's about being your best version, right? And so he said, miss, you know, I'm starting, you know, uh, my business that has been delayed because of COVID, but, you know, we really have, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of setting up. He didn't say what it was, which I understand. He said, but, you know, do you have any recommendations? What would you suggest? And so as I reflected on those two comments, right, on students coming to me and asking for advice, and I'm very honored that they would even consider me. You know, I don't, I don't consider myself any type of expert in any way, but I have gone through life, right? And my life has always been very challenging, as is everyone's, okay? Every, everybody's life is challenging. So it's about, you know, working it to your favor and using those challenges to grow and to, you know, be the best version of yourself and really understanding what it is that you've gone through because later on in life, you're going to get to it again and it's going to show up and then you, you can navigate through it quickly and, and, and fast, quickly, faster, and uh, more solid because you understand exactly what you went through. So, um, so in, in understanding both of uh, their questions, I, I realized because I really think about what it is that I need to tell my students and all that or whatever. So what I really realized about that is that it's sort of the same thing, okay? So in life, you know, and um, there's a book called uh, The uh, Outliers, and I think his name is Coldwell, I think, I don't know, and I think he's a sociologist, I'm not sure, please forgive me. So that book changed my life, right? It was very much criticized uh, later because, you know, they sort of said that it doesn't matter and, and it's not necessarily true. But I think the basic of what, the basis of what he came up with is very true. So he says that any type, and he studied all sorts of people, right? He studied very elite people. So he studied like the world renowned, like violinists. He studied all the incredible like NBA stars, you know, anybody that was elite, which is probably like a 1% or less in their field and how it is that they came up there, right? And what he saw and what he, he realized that the pattern was, was that everybody had about 10,000 hours under their belt with whatever it is that they did, okay? So, um, you know, and, and, and the naysayers say that it doesn't matter how, um, you know, how, uh, how much you practice, that if you're not really good at it, you're never gonna reach a perfection. And maybe that's true, but uh, but you will get exceptionally well at good at it, okay? But I'm gonna talk about really what really inspired me. So he mentioned that you have to put in 10,000 hours, okay? And so 10,000 hours equated to about 10 years, okay? 
for you to be exceptionally well and to be elite and to be top of your game, right? So um, I don't know, one of the basketball players, and please forgive me, but I'm not into sports. And so one of the basketball players that was heavy duty, you know, Jordan maybe, I don't know. So he, while everybody finished, he would go and hoop and hoop and hoop and hoop and throw hoops, like consistently, like hours and hours and hours and hours, more than anybody else during like college and during his MBA or whatever. So he put in so many hours. So whenever he shot, right, you know, he did the hoops. I don't know what those are called. He always made them, right? And so that was the same for, for virtuosos, you know, violinists that were very, elite and all that so there was a an underlying uh pattern that you that everybody that was very elite was ten thousand hours so there's much truth into that okay so if you don't know you know and nobody nobody wakes up and nobody is instantly who they are they go through a process and you know in my business communication class is really neat because they saw you know they studied businesses and businesses are about ideas and it's about meeting a need and most of them was about a passion that they had that they so much believed in right and so it was you know following that dream and and being very consistent with it and having a plan so that's what this video is really about, you know, in order for you to be exceptionally well and be proficient in what you do and really optimize the person that you are, you have to be very consistent and you have to be, you know, have willpower to do so. And you have to have a plan and you have to have a routine because every single time you have a routine, it's sort of like school, right? Or it's sort of like what it like jogging, right? So you get up, you know, I, I sort of tell them, you know, if you want to, if you want to do a marathon <coughs> and a 5k, you can't get up and do a 5k. You need to work your way up to, to it. You know, and it's sort of like reading. If you want to be an avid reader and you don't read, <coughs> excuse me, you have to work your way up to reading. And so what does that mean? You read a little bit one day and then you read a little bit one day and then you read a little bit the next day and then you read a little bit the next day and then you keep on going until eventually you read a whole book and it's not a chore anymore, right? Because because with reading consistently, you create, you know, your ability to read more, to expand your vocabulary, and to definitely, you know, read faster. And so that goes with anything that you do, right? If it's your business, you have to truly, and I'll do a, I'll do a, a, a video on how millionaires become millionaires and what it is that, they, that I've noticed, because I deal with a lot of millionaires, what it is that I've noticed in terms of patterns that they do that makes them different and how to really get money, okay? Because, you know, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions out there. If you say $5 or like I saw Acorn or whatever that you, they say, they save off your chain, that's not going to get you anywhere. I'm sorry to say. So, but, but anyway, so how do you become the best and how do you put up a, a business, right? So first of all, you have to be very consistent. You need to understand what it is that you want, right? So if you want to be active, if you want to be able to run, if you want to be able to exercise, then you need to fit it in, right? And um, there isn't going to be any time. So what does that mean? You know, if you have children, if you have a husband, if you have a house, you know, if you have a home, you have to feed everybody going to school and maybe you're, you're working, right? Or just working on going to school or going to school and not working, whatever it is, but you have a life because everybody has a life. What's going to, what's going to take for you to maybe run every day is maybe wake up at five o'clock in the morning, right? Or maybe in the evening before you get to, you know, before, before the COVID for my instance, you know, before I got home and we ate dinner, I always sort of ran. And so everybody sort of had to wait for me for about, you know, an hour or less and you know they got used to it so they didn't miss it and so by the time I got home I had already ran because I had already done my exercise because if I got home I noticed that I wouldn't get out I wouldn't be able to get out just because there was dinner and then you know chatting or whatever and then it got really late and I couldn't get out so you have to program it so it really is about reflecting on your schedules and reflecting how it is that you're going to incorporate it you need to incorporate it you can't just say well I'll run whenever you need to make it and schedule it and that's for everything right so whatever it is that you need improvement on you need to do it every single day 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 because if you don't then you lose the consistency and the routine of it and then later you start incorporating it into your being and your life right they sort of say you know exercise and eating well is a lifestyle and it sounds cliche but it really is it's about incorporating your 
eating patterns, right? So I hardly don't eat meat, although I'm, I've been eating more meat, but you know, I eat really, really healthy. You know, I've been off, you know, I sort of get off, you know, my little diet and stuff, but I really just eat like fish and I eat vegetables and I'm very consistent on it. Very, very consistent on it. If I go out to eat to a restaurant, I know what to eat. I don't deviate. I hardly don't eat pastas. I don't eat any bread. Um, you know, now with COVID, I've been eating all sorts of junk, but I try not to, but I, for the longest time I didn't, right? And so it becomes a lifestyle. It, it gets to the point where you don't miss it. And it gets to the point where it's just your life, right? You start, you know, you start missing the fish if you don't eat fish. I also became a vegetarian for a really long time. And so, you know, it was about incorporating it and understanding whenever I would have to go out and eat how to order. Okay. Because it's part of my life just because I would go out to eat. I couldn't, I couldn't not deviate from my lifestyle and my, my discipline of eating. So everything has to do with routine, persistency, consistency, right? You have to have the willpower. You need to want it. You need to really, really want it. If you want to lose weight, you need to want it. You need to discipline yourself and exercising and maybe in eating less. And you just have to have the willpower because you know, if you're satisfying the need right now, right, because you're hungry or you want a sweet or you want a bread, then you're going to pay for it later. So is it, you know, so it's a reward. It's like going to school, right? You sort of wait for your degree to come and, you know, you have to go through, you know, school in order to get your degree. So it's delayed satisfaction as opposed to really satisfying your need at that point, because then that's of no use, right? If you just eat your, your, your sweet bread, right? You just threw off, you know, you know, what I used to do is like, I used to want the sweet bread, right? So I used to like say, do I really want to eat that bread and have to maybe run another 15 or 20 minutes to run it off? Or shall I just suck it up and not eat it and I won't need it? And then I just sucked it up. And then after a while, it becomes a habit not to eat it, not to eat it, not to eat it. And then you don't crave it anymore. And you're able to, through discipline, through determination and consistency, you start eliminating things that you don't need, that you don't want, that don't serve you outside. You start eliminating them from your life, but you also start incorporating things that you so much like that will be benefiting for you, right? So like if you get up every day and you run and you walk and you run and you walk and you run and you walk or you run, 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 then, you know, after like two weeks or after a month, I think it's 60 days to create a habit after like a month you know, you'll be craving the running and it won't seem like it's, you know, like it's like it's, uh, you know, like it's something that you don't want or it's a punishment. You'll see it as something like a reward for you. And that's how, you know, healthy eating and, and healthy lifestyles are. It's not that you're punishing yourself that you don't have sweets or, or that you have to run and you're punishing yourselves. It's because you love yourself so much that you want to take care of yourself, right? And people say, you know, Miss Evan, you look really good and this and that. You know, this is like a life, a, a lifetime of work, right? I've had, I've had gentlemen that tell me any work, which I always thought was really rude right at the beginning, you know, cause I'm kind of naive, you know, believe it or not, I'm super old, but I'm kind of naive. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't understand. Right. So they meant like, you know, like work, right? Nose or whatever, breast or, or, you know, butt or whatever. And I was really shocked the first time they told me and, and then, you know, I was like, no, right? Because I, I mean, to each his own, right? But I just sort of think that you have to live with what God gave you and, and, and it's perfect, okay? And, um, and it's good enough, okay? All you have to do is just work at it and maintain it and that's it. Everything functions. Why would you change it, right? And then why would you mess for it? I've had major surgeries and they've been hard to heal with. I can't imagine going through surgery just for the hell of it to, for my ego or my vanity to look better. No, thank you. I just, this is what you get. You know, if you, if you want to, if you want to be with me, this is what you get. You know, you either love me like this or just bye. Right. So when they told me any work and I was like, no. And then I was ready for the next one. Right. When they told me any work, I'm like, yeah, five o'clock in the morning, a mile, you know, two miles in the morning, two miles in the afternoon, you know, no red meats, all fish, vegetarians, don't smoke, don't drink. You know, yeah, lots of work, right? Because that is work, okay? So I thought that was really funny and I was like waiting for the next one that that sort of told me, right? The whole thing about this very long video, and I don't know if this works or not, or if this is helpful, but it really is about being consistent and, and putting in your 10,000 hours, right? Um, 
you have to want it you have to be consistent you have to be really really like uh faithful to your schedule because if you're not you know like if you wake up at seven o'clock in the morning as i tell my students you know that's late like you're like already missed like two hours okay by the time you get up and by the time you shower or go run or whatever it's like nine or ten like you're done with the morning okay so most people that are very effective and very highly efficient and are, you know, millionaires, they work a lot, okay? And and they're sometimes, you know, out nine hours and sometimes they're they're morning hours or whatever morning people, but for the most part, the morning people are up answering, you know, emails by five o'clock in the morning, okay? Or if they're night, they like answer emails till like ten or eleven o'clock at night. So it's not about you know, oh, I've worked so much or, you know, oh, it's already seven. It's about getting up at five and running and then coming, making food for the kids, doing your homework, going to work, you know, being as pre best prepared as you can for the day so you can get everything in because this is life. Life is about living it, right? Life is about, you know, making food, being with your family, you know, getting up and running, you know, things happen, right? Unexpectedly, getting a flat, how are you going to get to work or whatever, right? So that's about life. And that is, that is the neat things about life. And how do you get better at life? It's about practicing. It's about learning. It's about really, you know, adjusting to your life and your environment and being consistent, um, having the discipline to do so, wanting it, having the willingness and the willpower to do so and you know and mostly most importantly believing in yourself and believing that you are so much worth it that you deserve to get up at five o'clock in the morning to run so you will feel great and you will have more stamina and you will live a much better life because it's not about necessarily living a longer life but it's about living a full richness of life where you can go to the bathroom by yourself where you can like my mother live alone I live with my mother you know um I go and live with her half and half time or whatever but I mean you know I live with her right and she's you know 87 years old and she lives by herself and that should be the ultimate goal for life to be completely independent because you're a badass because you've you've taken care of business and you've taken care of business throughout your life and most importantly if you have children you're a model to your children and you don't have to tell them it is through your lifestyle of what you do that they will become but most importantly do it for yourself you deserve it namaste love and light